No, I actually mean that you should play music that sounds terrible. Here's why. A lot of people who watch this channel may be here because you are also musicians. And as musicians, we never in our entire lives will ever stop learning. We will never stop attempting to get better. And it doesn't matter how many hours a day you put in, whether it's an hour or four or 40, you will never reach a point where you don't have something that you could improve upon. For me, one of the biggest hurdles that I encountered when I was learning music, especially when I was starting to get into jazz, was the whole concept of improvising. Improvising. Now everybody knows what improvisation is, it's literally just playing things that are not written out ahead of time. Making it up as you go along. The concept itself is pretty simple, but what often blows people away is when they hear that applied at a high level. I can't tell you the number of times that I have been told or that my fellow musicians have been told something along the lines of, oh, I could just never imagine being able to do that. That's incredible. And while those comments are of course always appreciated, the reality is it's not as difficult as people might think. Before we get into what I mean when I say you should play badly, let's first talk about a few of the things that improvisation is based on. Oftentimes when we improvise, we are using the chord progression of a known song and we're simply replacing the melody with our own, which we are making up on the spot. It's a sound you're likely familiar with and it might sound a little bit something like this. That particular chord progression came from a really popular jazz standard called Take the A Train, but I opted not to use the melody of the tune and instead just made up my own as I went along. What I'm actually playing is based on a number of things. Each time we reach a new chord, there are certain notes that might fit with that chord and other notes that may not. For every single chord that you hear going on, there is a scale that would correspond with that chord. Now, knowing what that scale is, is a helpful starting point when we're deciding, well, what notes are we going to play when we come to that chord? But that's all it is. It's just a good starting point to understand scale to chord relationships. Then there's a whole other set of considerations that we have to give to, okay, well, even if we understand what the notes of each individual scale might be, how are we going to use those notes to play something that's sounds like a coherent melody, something that sounds like maybe something you might sing, or that could have its own words and be its own melody. That's typically what we strive to play rather than just a bunch of notes taken from the scales in no particular order with no particular thought given to them. Although that is sometimes a, an approach that, that people do. When things maybe get a little rowdy. But the moral of the story here is that we have certain things that we pay attention to when we're deciding what we're going to play in improvisation. And when you break it down, it really just is its own language. That's all it is. If you think about how some people can speak Spanish and French or German or any other language in the world, if you don't speak that language, then it may not make sense to you to listen to. It might be beautiful to listen to, but you're not necessarily gonna understand the words. You might look at somebody who speaks five languages and you're just like, wow, I would, I would love to be able to do that, that's amazing. And that's kind of like when people say to musicians who improvise, wow, that's incredible, I don't know how you do that. Well, you do actually, because it's just the same process as that person went through to learn five different languages. Only when it comes to music, that's only one language that we have to worry about. And as with any language, there are components of it that you learn. You probably do vocabulary, you learn sentences and phrases and verbs and conjugations and all these different things that languages are comprised of. Music is made up of these same building blocks. So essentially, all we have to do is learn a complete language and be 100% fluent in it in order to converse. Yeah, it's a pretty tall order, especially when you're starting from scratch. I still remember what it felt like to improvise for the first time, and let me tell you, the building blocks of the language of music and the chord scale relationships and the melodic patterns and all the different things that maybe I sometimes think about now, I wasn't about to think of any of that when I'm trying to improvise for the first time. I was focused on one thing, not sucking. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a totally natural thing when you're playing music. Like, why do we play music at all? Because it sounds beautiful, it's fun, it's, it's enjoyable. We want to play things that are pleasing to our ears. We want to sound good. Our brains are so locked on this target of like, don't mess up. 
On an intellectual level, we of course understand that mistakes are valuable and we can learn a lot from them and there's really nothing wrong with making mistakes, but it doesn't change the fact that our brains and our hands still want to play things that are correct or that sound good. Well, if you are focused on that approach as you're starting to learn improvisation, you're only going to hold yourself back. That is not gonna help you at all. All. And in fact, the more you focus on those building blocks of music, you're talking about a language that you don't even fully understand yet. I mean, it would be like if you had taken a year of Spanish in high school and then you decided you were gonna try to write a book, or even more appropriately, give a speech in front of a crowd in a language that you don't understand yet. You've just started piecing this stuff together. You're not gonna stand up on stage and off the cuff just perform a stand-up comedy set in a language that you don't know. So learning those building blocks are obviously helpful and that's obviously the way that we're going to eventually improve and improve and improve and start to hone in on our skill set. However, if we are focused so intently on that from the point that we start, we're never gonna get anywhere because our brains are gonna stop us from doing anything that sounds bad. And sounding bad is absolutely the gatekeeper to learning this language and learning how to use it effectively and ultimately fluently. That was a lot of lees in a row. I have literally no idea if any of that was grammatically correct. Grammatically. My suggestion that you should attempt to play music badly is based on a very simple concept. If you hold yourself back wanting to play correctly and in a way that sounds good, you're gonna be relegated to the things that you already know and understand. And unfortunately, that is not really how you learn effectively. Now you can learn it from a book and try to apply it piece by piece with absolute accuracy, but that's never gonna work. The only way that you can actually start to gain experience and something and apply the things that you think you sort of understand but you still gotta work out. The only way that you're actually going to make progress is if you say, I'm gonna take some chances and I'm gonna just throw some stuff around and I may not know how it works or what it's gonna sound like, but once I hear it, I'm gonna understand I either liked that or I did not like that. And then over time, I can hone that process so that I'm ultimately playing more and more and more of what I like and what I believe sounds good. But you're not gonna find any of that if you're so stuck on this idea of sounding good from the get-go. Let's take, for example, something very simple, an F blues. Now, I've been working on improvisation for over 15 years at this point, and so it's something that, while there is so much left to be desired in terms of how I feel about my own playing, I'd like to think that I'm at least a little better than when I started. If I played an F blues today, it might sound something like this. Compare that to when I first started improvising, it may have sounded something more like this. Which of course, if you compare the two, I mean, there's a whole bunch of differences in regards to surely just the amount of harmonic information as well as things like the feel is super, super different between those two examples. But the thing is, a lot of musicians might look at themselves playing the more simple one and think this is garbage, this is terrible, I don't even, I don't want to, it's not fun to play because I, I, I know that there's nothing else that I know how to do. But here's the thing, literally like anything else you do, if you were to actually learn a language or learn a new sport or just pick up a new hobby or a skill, you're gonna be be bad in the beginning. The weird thing is just that with music, like it's not fun to us or we don't we don't want to sound bad. So therefore we'll do a variety of things to avoid that altogether, whether it's only ever learning songs from the YouTube tutorials, which is a great starting point, don't get me wrong. The problem with that approach is that it's born out of two things. Number one, we wanna be able to do the thing that's going to be pleasing to our ears as fast as possible. And to have somebody literally just say, put this finger here, put that finger there, put that finger there, and put that finger there, and you got it, that's the song. That's 
really satisfying because then we get to memorize that, we get to play it, and we get to hear the thing that we want so desperately to play. There's nothing wrong with that approach whatsoever. That's fine. But here's where it might hold you back. You didn't learn anything by doing that. I mean, yeah, sure, you picked up some uh, maybe chord shapes and you, you picked up an ability to kind of move your fingers one at a time to play the notes in the right order, and that's valuable, certainly. But at the end of the day, you only know how to do that one thing by placing your hands in that one place and pressing the keys in that one order. Why do we do that? Well, we do it because it sounds good. We're able to achieve the thing we wanted to achieve. We're able to do it as quickly as possible. But in order to break through that barrier to the next level, we have to be willing to give up that sounding good part and move to a sounding bad part. Even when you're learning classical pieces or anything like that, you're going to go through phases where it just sounds bad as you're learning to piece together all the all the parts. Improvisation is absolutely no exception to this rule. We have to be comfortable playing things that sound bad first because it's the only way that we're going to get our ears to hear maybe more interesting things other than, well, if I'm going to play an F blues, you literally the only thing I know how to play is the blues scale, so I'm only going to pick notes from the blues scale. Great starting point. It's not going to get you that far. That's why I really love free improvisation as a concept in general. It's this idea that like, let me just place my hands. Okay, that's like, I don't know what that is. It's not any, I just kind of slap my hands down. But if I listen to that, if I really kind of chew on that sound for a bit, what is it, what does it feel like? That wasn't exactly the same thing, but it was something remotely similar. It's an interesting sound. Ooh, okay. Well, then I found that from just moving around in a similar manner. Super weird, uh, a lot of stuff sounded really dissonant and very much not what I would typically choose to play. But as I kind of got into that a little bit, I started kind of picking up little small details and went, hmm, what if I, what if I mess around with this concept? Like you noticed I messed around with this C major concept for a minute and that kind of yielded some interesting results. And all of these things that I never would have gotten to discover if I was so focused on playing the correct thing and sounding good. Now, once we get to a level where we're starting to learn how to incorporate things like chord scale relationships, melodic patterns, some of the building blocks that make up the language of music, are we going to necessarily just play random things in an effort to sound bad? Well, no, of course not. But as a learning tool, it is so important to forego that necessity to play things correctly and to allow yourself to play things that your brain does not want to let you play. Because if you only ever stick to what you know, you're never going to find new and interesting sounds. Playing badly has been one of the most valuable tools that I have used to learn how to improvise better, to learn how to take advantage of new and interesting sounds that I wouldn't have thought of before. Sitting here and free improvising like this is one of my favorite things to do because it just, it leads me to so many weird, interesting things that I otherwise definitely would not play. And so I implore you 
you, if you want to advance your improvisational skills and if you want to become more open to ideas and playing new things, try playing badly. Because in the process of playing badly, you might find some things that sound pretty good. Anyways, that's gonna do it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions on this, or if you have your own ideas for things that you have used that have helped you learn improvisation better, let me know in the comments below. I'll try to answer as many questions as I can get to. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider checking out the merch store. Link in the description down below. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.